What's up everyone, it's Kadi with MoneyVest. So in this video, we are going to be talking about the markets, of course, and Jerome Powell's speech summary a little bit. I'm going to break that down. And of course, unemployment numbers coming out this week on Friday, which is why the markets did rally because we came in a little bit softer than what the expectations were. So we got lots to unpack, lots to break down in this market update. As always, if you enjoy this video, find it helpful, make sure that you drop a like. I would really appreciate that. And of course, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And the links to our Discord and Patreon is going to be down below if you're interested in joining. And of course, getting access to over 50 plus members only videos. The first week of the month is the best time to join, including my 30 stock shopping list with my buy targets, our MoneyVest index, and of course, a lot of other really actionable videos that you can take advantage of. I also want to mention that we have a sale in the month of May for all of our courses. So fundamental, technical options, and psychology. Every single course is going to be half off. So 50% off and the coupon code is going to be May 50, only valid for the month of May and expires on May 31st. So take advantage of that while it's still available and do connect with me on Instagram. My handle is going to be CassWRP. So first things first, let's talk a little bit about the Joel's numbers. Oh, I don't know what happened there. My entire presentation basically closed out. Just give me one second. Let me just reopen that here very quickly. So um, yeah, preview quite unexpectedly. Not sure what happened there. Uh, but let me just there do that. There we go. So, okay. So make no mistake, the Fed isn't the market's friend. The S&P 500 will lose steam. This was from one of the market strategists uh, from Victor Kossel, uh, Seaport Research Partners. And uh, they basically mentioned that on Wednesday, of course, the Fed chair, Jerome Powell, uh, kept the Federal Reserve rates unchanged. And he signaled that he would like to lower interest rates if the conditions were right, but they weren't right yet. They haven't gotten that greater confidence. And Friday's payroll report didn't even increase the odds that the Federal Reserve will act in July all that much. There's just about a 62.9% chance that the Federal Reserve will remain on hold, down from 66.2%. The Fed just told you, we're not hiking, but we don't have the confidence to cut yet is what they basically mentioned and this makes the stock market vulnerable to declines while friday's rally felt encouraging in the moment it wasn't all that convincing uh the s p 500 is still down 2.8 percent from its all-time highs and it hasn't been able to retake its 50-day moving averages near 5130 and if it can't breach 5130 that's not a good thing says matthew turtle total capital management there are a lot of money managers that have hard and fast rules they will not buy until the market uh, uh if the market is of course under the 50-day moving averages. So market set for a May rally with Apple results a catalyst based on the 74 year trend. So this was from Mark Newton at Fundstrat. Um, I'm going to break all this down in, uh, of course, in a little bit, but I really want to go over these trends because uh, this was from Fundstrat Mark Newton since 1950. S&P 500 generated a median return of 1.1% in the month of May. And during election years, the returns are even better. So which the latter half of May and the entirety of June tend to be very, very bullish is what Mark Newton mentioned, uh, and this was a 74-year seasonality trend that they have uh, that they have tested uh, in the market. Of course, looking at election years and non-election years as well. The jobs numbers coming in a little bit lighter than what the expectations were. So, 175,000 jobs added versus 243,000 expected. Unemployment rate did tick higher a little bit from 3.8 to 3.9 percent. I've got a video coming out on unemployment later today, so we'll be talking about that in more detail and what that means for the market and the economy. Uh, so this, again, just suggests that, OK, unemployment slightly taking higher. There's possibility that, OK, the Federal Reserve uh, could, you know, cut rates a little bit faster or more than what the expectations are, because um, this is one of the one of the reasons why the Federal Reserve would pivot. It's unemployment going higher because it's part of their dual mandate. Part of their dual mandate is, of course, price stability. So keeping prices stable and steady. So inflation in check. And the other thing is employment, right? So unemployment, uh, not getting out of control, keeping stable employment levels at 2 to 3% to as much as 4%. But the moment it starts to kind of creep up beyond that level is when the Federal Reserve will have a choice to make, whether to fight inflation or whether to control unemployment going higher. So that we still don't know exactly what the Federal Reserve is going to favor. But in my opinion, it is much better to favor inflation, meaning that to bring inflation down at the expense of unemployment going higher because the Federal Reserve can manage and handle unemployment later much faster than they can handle inflation. Because as I mentioned before, what is easier and faster to do? Quantitative easing is much easier and faster to do as opposed to quantitative tightening. So the risk of doing too early, the risk of cutting interest rates too early is far greater than the risk of cutting too late. Because risk of cutting too early 
means inflation going back higher, accelerating back up. And that will, of course, be a bit of a problem. But cutting too late is OK because they can always cut them down to zero percent and help support the economy and, of course, unemployment as well. So so that's where we are. Again, there are a lot of expectations from a different strategists and market participants, whether the markets are going to go higher or lower from here. We'll take a look at the technicals and I'll go over the money vest index as well. And the Joel's number is coming in at eight point four eight eight million. So a little bit shy of what the expectations were. So job openings going down unemployed persons going up that's reducing that ratio and softening the labor market that's exactly what we want to see um, if there's going to be any hopes of a rate cut which i will go over again in the unemployment video so markets overall rallying pretty aggressively nvidia microsoft apple amazon meta google everything pushing higher this right here the last one week apple up over eight percent in the past week tesla up over seven percent in the past one week, and this is the past one month with Meta, biggest underperformer in the MAX 7, Tesla up 5.8, Amazon up 3.4, Google up over 11%, and Apple is up over 8% as well. So very, very um, strong move to the upside for a lot of these individual stocks here. But of course, other ones really just pulling back. Uh, in the last one day, again, all sectors in the S&P 500 pushing higher. So that's pretty solid. In the last one week, we did get a little bit of a split market with energy and comm services selling off. In the last one month, of course, most sectors are red with only utilities and comm services pushing higher. I also wanted to break down all these 11 sectors in the S&P 500 and their valuations. Uh, you'll notice that on a forward P basis, energy, financial and materials are the ones that kind of make more sense from a valuation perspective, trading at 9, 12, 14 times earnings multiple. But again, they do have very high peg ratios, so energy at 2.3, basic materials 2.6, and utilities at 2.2. Comm services, despite a 17 times earnings multiple, still continues to trade at a 1.22 peg ratio. So of all the sectors out there in the S&P, I do believe that comm services, which includes your likes of Meta and Google, is by far one of the most appropriately priced at the moment. So this right here is a sector that I would be a lot more interested in at the moment, given the valuations, given the peg ratio, um, even consumer cyclical, one could argue trading at a 1.25 peg ratio with an 18 times earnings multiple on a forward basis, a lot more reasonable, but then other sectors like technology, 24 times earnings and a two times peg ratio with industrials and consumer defenses also very very expensive at well over two times the peg ratio and price for free cash flow also really really high with comm services you're also looking at 20 21 times free cash flow multiple uh, consumer cyclicals is a little bit under 30 uh, but of course technology is well over 34 uh, at the moment so i would say you know comm services probably one of the best sectors out there for value Second to consumer cyclicals, um, and then we've got even financials. I think financials are pretty solid. Financials continue to kind of, uh, you know, fail to rally. So if you take a look at VFH, uh, that is going to be the Vanguard's financial ETF. Uh, they have seen some nice gains. I mean, they're they're almost trading back up to all-time highs, but we did see a bit of a pullback here, which was, of course, with the broader markets. Uh, but this was the entire... Uh, you know, run up of 36% with a nice dividend yield of about 1.9%. So VFH uh, is another ETF that I may start dollar cost averaging into. I may start the experiment on financials ETF because it does have a lot of really solid banks. And of course, uh, you know, some of the biggest banks in the world um, and too big to fail banks as well, like JP Morgan, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, Citigroup, like some of those companies. So on the next pullback on drawdown here down in the 90s, uh, I'd be interested in starting a position in VFH in financials and start looking into the sector more on an often regular basis and start low cost averaging more frequently. Um, so those are the two that I'm interested in right now, but other ones as they come down we'll we'll continue to look into it and individual stocks within those sectors as well volatility down cocoa prices pushing higher natural gas wheat cotton everything pushing higher with orange juice and crude oil uh pushing down bitcoin just over sixty three thousand again so recovering back higher ether just over 3100 at the moment now u.s labor market uh sees a downshift so a little bit of a pullback in the overall jobs growth smallest advance in six months for uh, the number of jobs added in the month of April, unemployment rate rises to 3.9%. And this is actually quite an interesting chart. It shows that the length of the Fed pauses and the S&P performance. So last hike date with the first cut date, how many days gap do we actually see? 61 in 1974, 29 in 1980s. 24 days in 1981, 1984 had a 42 days, but this was is this is the longest number of days we've seen for the pause from the Federal Reserve since 1974. On average, we've seen 146 days and an average gain on the S&P during the Fed pause, 
5.6%. So far, we've seen a 12.4% gain during this Fed pause. Um, and we'll see if the markets can continue to keep up with this rally here um, as this pause continues. Um, and, and of course, nobody really knows when we're going to get that first rate cut. Coming over to volatility, a uh, huge drawdown. So down about 8% here back in the 13s, uh, of course. And the Money Best Index obviously pushing up higher. So 3.51 is where we are. Uh, I mentioned this in our Discord. So again, if you want to get access to all the uh, you know alerts and updates, I think that's going to be super useful because uh, we essentially, the idea is to provide you with very, very actionable, um, you know, suggestions and recommendations, right? We're not here to kind of, um, you know, the idea is to cut out all the noise and make it as simple as possible for all of you. So this is the post that I shared um, in our Discord, uh, basically mentioned that S&P 500 with the MoneyVest Index, uh, reading is at 3.39. So right now we are at uh, 3.51. So we did push higher a little bit further. Uh, so 3.39 is where we were when I did this post and uh, three levels I'm closely watching on the S&P and what I estimate the MoneyVest Index reading to be at each level. Number one, 4,800. Uh, MoneyVest Index is going to come down to 2.8. That's going to be a good buying opportunity. 4,600. MoneyVest Index at 2.5. That's going to be a great buying opportunity. Then we got 4,100. Uh, MoneyVest Index is going to come down to 2. That's going to be an excellent buying opportunity. And sub 4,000. MoneyVest Index at sub 2. Th uh, sub two that's going to be the best buying opportunity. And this is the chart. These are the levels that I've highlighted. Um, and again, the MoneyVest Index, every time it comes down to that green line or under 2, by no means, uh, I mean, don't take that lightly. This is a very, very rare occurrence in the market and becomes one of the best buying opportunities in the markets as well. So uh, so that's really where we are um, at the moment. I mean, crude oil prices continue to slide lower. We did see a breakdown from this head and shoulders that we were watching. So left shoulder, head and right shoulder and then a huge breakdown below this level. And the next support really is going to be down at $73, $74 a barrel for crude oil. So lots of consolidation in that head and shoulders. And of course, a reasonable breakdown below that level for crude. Um, and then, of course, if you come over to the S&P 500 here on the 30 minute time frame, uh, you'll notice that we are starting to move back higher very nicely. So still within the context of this uptrend of higher highs and higher lows. So if I extend this line higher, if I extend this line up even further, next target and very important resistance stays put at 5160 to 5200. So that would be the next target. And of course, we'll go ahead and turn this level into a support for the S&P 500 since we are trading above that level. We did get rejected here. Uh, you'll notice that we got a huge reversal and a rug pull. And then, of course, a huge gap up on Apple's earnings here. And support level now is going to stay put at 5110 to 5080 for the S&P. And the next target and resistance staying put at 5167 to 5200. Uh, talking about the Nasdaq and same exact thing. So this right here can be argued as a little bit of an uptrend here of higher highs and higher lows, a very strong support. You can see that even after the gap up, we came down, validated that support, which was a previous resistance very, very nicely. Um, and then of course, pushing back higher. So this is going to be that support level to keep in mind with 15,900, another level to keep in mind below that for uh, for the NASDAQ. So that is going to be that a uh, couple levels to keep in mind and watch for the NASDAQ. So very nice higher highs and higher lows and an uptrend. And next resistance and targets going to stay up at 16,000. Uh, 490, 60,450, somewhere around those levels. That's pretty much the all-time high and an area where we have gone rejection multiple times here for the NASDAQ. Now, coming over to Apple. So Apple here, a very nice gap up. I've got a video coming out on Apple later today. So we'll be breaking down the entire earnings. Uh, we'll be talking about, you know, what the company reported, um, you know, some of the things that they're doing financial engineering wise, biggest buybacks of $110 billion. So we'll cover all of that in that separate video with a support level, of course, sitting put in roughly in the 170s and a target and resistance back up to 197, 198 for Apple. Amazon, on the other hand, also pushing higher very nicely, higher highs and higher lows. We've got a video coming out on Amazon as well in terms of earnings and resistance is going to stay but roughly at 188 to 189. So that is going to be that level and that target to keep in mind with the support level sitting roughly at 171 for Amazon all the way down to 159 to as much as 143. Very nice uptrend, still validating some of those levels to keep in mind. Tesla, on the other hand, uh, I've got a video coming out on Tesla later today as well. Support level getting validated very nicely at 177. My covered calls are up 90%. We'll be closing them out very, very soon and we'll be selling once again as soon as Tesla gets up to over $200. So again, if you want to get access to options alerts as well, link's going to be down below. Options wise, I am very confident and I can tell you that if you just simply 
understand the strategies that I'm employing and are able to kind of understand how to look at the markets, options wise, selling calls, selling puts. Um, in one trade, one trade, there's possibilities, there's potential that you can actually make enough to pay for three years worth of subscription for MoneyVest because the covered calls that I sold on Tesla were able to make you know close to a thousand dollars in just a couple of days. And the success rate is really, really high. It is really high. I mean, the win rate for us in our community is well over 80 to 90%. Uh, and that's, again, very rare, very unheard of because we don't buy calls and puts because I know that that's a loser's game. If you start selling options, that's where most of the money is made because that's how you're able to generate some nice premiums and cash flows from um, from selling options. So Tesla resistance is going to stay put at 200. So 202, 203 support level, very nicely validated at 176 down to as low as inside the screen rectangle in the 150s for Tesla. Tesla. Uh, talking about advanced micro devices, so AMD. I uh, did a video on AMD earlier, so make sure that you do check that out. Huge resistance here at this target at 151. Uh, very, very oversold, so there is possibilities for a little bit of a reversal considering uh, that it's been selling off, you know, well over 30 to 40% down from its all-time highs and target and resistance is going to be back up to 164, 165 for advanced micro devices. Uh, NVIDIA is going to be with a resistance at closer to $906. So that is going to be that next level. NVIDIA reports earnings later this month on May 22nd. Support level now is going to stay up at 845. So this is going to be that level to keep in mind. Resistance, like I said, all the way up to 907 to as much as $972 for NVIDIA. Uh, talking about PayPal and PayPal here seems to still be struggling down almost 2% even after a very strong green day from the market. It's been kind of hovering in between that support, but I do have a feeling that it's going to eventually break out over $70 per share. Uh, support level is going to be inside this green rectangle as we have already discussed, all the way down to $57 and a huge resistance and of course a target over here. Uh, if you do get a breakout, the next resistance and target is going to be $76, $77 per share for, for PayPal. So that is going to be that level to keep in mind for the company. Visa, on the other hand, continues to slide lower. Uh, support level is going to stay up at 266 all the way down to 249 250 for Visa. So those right there are going to be a couple levels to keep in mind. I'm waiting for better buying opportunities on Visa because even at these prices right now, it doesn't make sense uh, to be a buyer at these levels. Meta pushing higher, so 2.3% after the gap down, it's now starting to move back up, but it's got a huge supply and a resistance that it's coming up to. That's going to be sitting right over here inside this red rectangle, sitting roughly in the 450s and 470s for Meta. And if you do get a breakout above this, the next target and resistance is going to be at 515 to as much as $530 for Meta. Support level is going to stay put at 385 for this company. Uh, talking about Netflix and Netflix here, also pushing higher very nicely, very similar to Meta. Uh, nice day, 2.5% green. Resistance is going to stay up at 596 to close to $600 per share for Netflix. And support level is going to stay up roughly at 537 to 540 for uh, Netflix. And again, this right here is going to be the gap uh, to watch for Netflix with a resistance, of course, all the way up to 597 close to $600 per share for this stock. Google, on the other hand, uh, seeing a bit of a pullback. So this right here was the gap, it gapped up very nicely, pulled right back down, validating that support at the moment in the 160s, very, very nice area of demand in the 150s for Google as well. But right now, price is a little too high. I will be doing a video on the earnings and of course, breaking them down uh, in a more dedicated video here very soon. Uh, and then finally, we come over to Microsoft and Enphase. Microsoft here pushing higher very nicely up over 2%. Resistance and targets going to be back up to 417 for Microsoft and support level is going to stay put, of course, inside this green rectangle um, at the moment. Uh, and like I said, targets back up to 417. But the valuation is a little bit more on the expensive side for Microsoft. And I've got a video coming out on Microsoft as well. I've got literally four or five videos, dedicated videos on Max 7 stocks coming out later today. Uh, end phase on the other hand, pushing higher, but still very much in the context of this downtrend of lower highs and lower low. So this right here is going to be that lower high. This is going to be that lower low. And right now we're still very much in the context of this downtrend. Support level. It's going to stay put at $106, resistance up to as much as $130 at $139 for Enphase moving forward. So those right there are going to be some levels to keep in mind for, uh, for Enphase. And finally, we come over to Costco and Costco here rallying back higher very nicely up over one and a half percent so pushing up resistance is going to stay put at 748 749 and support level down at 700 dollars 704 dollars um, lots of consolidation sideways costco's valuation is always been trading at a bit of a premium and expensive valuations so not interested at this stock at the moment but of course a very very high quality company nonetheless so hope you all enjoyed this video and found it helpful if you did make sure that you drop a like subscribe to the channel and don't forget we do have that sale 
50% off on all the courses, individual courses. Coupon code is going to be May 50, valid until May 31st. And also do connect with our Patreon and our Discord. Links going to be down below with all the alerts and all the private videos that you can watch at your own time. As always, happy investing and I'll see you all in the next video.